Thou also, son of man, take thee a tile, and lay it before thee, and portray upon it the city, even Jerusalem. This tile is a Babylonian brick, as used for inscription. He's going to draw a picture of Jerusalem upon this Babylonian brick, the symbolism being with Jerusalem being drawn within the four corners of this Babylonian brick is the siege of Jerusalem and the captivity of Judah in the historical sense. And they were taken captive into Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar, who was a type of Antichrist. And ultimately, this happened in mid-July, as you can document in your Smith's Bible Dictionary in the entry on Zedekiah, the term of the locust being that five-month period between May and September, and the king of Babylon of the end times of this final generation being Satan, who will appear in Jerusalem as Antichrist at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. Will that happen in mid-July as well, in the midst of May through September? Well, we don't know. That's why we are to watch as Christ commanded us in Mark 13, where he again warned us of Satan's appearance as the false Christ in Jerusalem. So God has commanded Ezekiel to take a tile and lay it before thee and portray upon it the city, even Jerusalem, verse 2, and lay siege against it and build a fort against it and cast a mount against it, set the camp also against it, set battering rams against it round about. Moreover, take thou unto thee an iron pan and set it for a wall of iron between thee and the city. Underline that word iron and set thy face against it and it shall be besieged and thou shalt lay siege against it. This shall be a sign to the house of Israel. Seven times God used the word against concerning Jerusalem and it is at the seventh trumpet upon the return of the true Christ, along with the armies of heaven that he'll bring with him, as it's written of in First Thessalonians chapter 4, as well as Revelation 19, those clouds of heaven are the armies of heaven that return with the true Christ. It's at that time that Jerusalem will be cleansed, being turned into sand, and the Kenites, those stones worn smooth, over a long period of time, you are to count them, enumerate them, as you're told in Revelation 13, 18, when you look up that word count in your Strong's Concordance, that's what it means. Those evil figs that you are to be aware of will cease to be as far as the flesh is concerned, because a Kenite is a hybrid, a thing of the flesh, and there will be no more flesh upon the return of the true Christ. Their souls will go through the millennium, and they'll be given an opportunity to stand against Satan after the thousand years are finished. If they didn't stand against him during the hour of temptation, having come out of confusion themselves because of what God will say through his election during that time, it could happen, and inasmuch as you reap what you sow, Satan originally sowed the seed of rebellion, so it wouldn't be that much of a surprise for his own children to rebel against him. If not during the hour of temptation at some point, then at the end of the thousand years, after the thousand years are finished. This iron pan that we see in verse 3 is symbolic of the army that will besiege Jerusalem during the sixth trumpet, that fourth beast of Daniel chapter 7 that has great iron teeth. Remember I said underline that word iron? As it's written in the ninth verse of the ninth chapter of the book of Revelation, Satan's locust army, those fallen angels that are part of Daniel's fourth beast, it's strictly supernatural, that fourth beast of Daniel chapter 7, they have breastplates of iron. There it is again. Jerusalem being symbolic of the virgin bride of Christ turned into the whore of Babylon and burned with fire. And those ten fallen angel kings that you can read of in Revelation chapter 17 that reign one hour with the beast hate the whore and make her desolate and naked and eat her flesh and burn her with fire. The fire is symbolic of deception. They kill a third spiritually, and that third is Christianity for the most part because they're the only ones that have the promise of eternal life in the first place and therefore are the only ones that can die spiritually. Everybody else is dead already because there's only one way to the Father, and that's through the true Christ. So the virgin bride of Christ, which is symbolized by Jerusalem, the virgin daughter of Jerusalem, will cease to be a virgin for the most part, leaving only those with the seal of God in their forehead, God's elect, remaining virgins spiritually speaking and standing against Satan and his one world system 
at that time with the gospel armor on and in place, the helmet of salvation, which is the seal of God in your forehead, the truth of God's word, whereby you're not deceived, hard as adamant, as we read earlier in the book of Ezekiel, along with the breastplate of righteousness. And there you have the positive aspect of what's being depicted here in this fourth chapter of the book of Ezekiel. And at the seventh trumpet, the true Christ shall return to rule with a rod of iron. So for every positive, there's a negative, that word iron being the key word there. Verse 4 says, Lie thou also upon thy left side, and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it, according to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon it, thou shalt bear their iniquity. For I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity. So these days will be symbolic of years. According to the number of the days, 390 days, so shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel, the ten tribes to the north that were already taken into captivity at this point historically by the Assyrian, who's also a type of Antichrist, as well as the king of Babylon, who will take the southern kingdom of Judah into captivity, and Nebuchadnezzar was a type of Antichrist as well, the king of Babylon. Babylon means confusion. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Again, these days are symbolic of years. Therefore thou shalt set thy face toward the siege of Jerusalem, and thine arm shall be uncovered, and thou shalt prophesy against it. And behold, I will lay bands upon thee, and thou shalt not turn thee from one side to another, till thou hast ended the days of thy siege. So not only would it be about 430 years from the return to rebuild Jerusalem, written of in Ezra and Nehemiah, both good and bad figs return, the Nethanim were among them, and that's how they infiltrated the priesthood, becoming the scribes and Pharisees that caused Christ to be crucified. You add 430 years to that return written of in Ezra and Nehemiah, and that brings you up to Christ's first advent. And as it's written in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28, So Christ was once offered to bear the sin of many. So then Ezekiel symbolizes Christ in these particular verses of Ezekiel chapter 4. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. This goes for those who look for him during that time, during the great apostasy, those who understand will still be waiting for the true Christ to return, understanding that the true Christ will not return until immediately after that five-month-long tribulation of Satan. And if you were to count backward from 1948, the year in which this final generation of the fig tree began, and go back 430 years it would take you to the time of the Protestant Reformation, initiated even by one of the children of Judah, true Judah, that is to say, and would lead up even to the founding of the United States, which would become one of the two superpowers of the end times, bringing you up to the generation of the fig tree, which ends with those two superpowers, Jacob and Esau, that is to say, in a one-world political system, along with the Kenites, symbolized by the leopard, and within that you have the infrastructure of that one world political system, education, economics, politics, and religion, and Daniel's fourth beast, Satan and his angels. The fourth beast in Daniel 7 is strictly supernatural, as you can see for yourself if you carefully read Daniel chapter 7. All four of those beasts rise up together out of the sea at the same time at the woe of the fifth trumpet. The lion, symbolic of the Christian nations, the bear, the communistic, as well as their confederacy with Ishmael, Esau as well as Ishmael, that is to say, and then you have the Kenites and the four hidden dynasties, as well as the fourth beast, and it has ten horns, and there are no ten horns written of anywhere else in our Father's Word other than the books of Daniel and Revelation that I know of, and in both cases they're supernatural. Those ten kings reign one hour with the beast, that hour being split into two two-and-a-half-month periods, and at the end of the first two-and-a-half-month period, the deadly wound will occur, in my opinion, and then Satan will appear as the false Christ at the sixth trumpet, beginning the fourth and final stage 
of the Locust Army, the consumer stage, that is to say, and at the end of that five-month period, the true Christ will return, symbolized by that stone that destroys the statue of Daniel chapter 2, which is also symbolic of that one world system. It gets destroyed at the seventh trumpet, and then Christ sets up his everlasting kingdom that continues from there on out. Take thou also unto thee wheat and barley and beans and lentils and millet and fitches and put them in one vessel. Notice the six ingredients in the vessel, the vessel being the body, and make thee bread thereof according to the number of the days, and thou shalt lie upon thy side three hundred and ninety days shalt thou eat thereof. And thy meat which thou shalt eat shall be by weight twenty shekels a day, from time to time shalt thou eat it. Thou shalt also drink water by measure, the sixth part of an hen. There's six again with those six ingredients as well. Satan's number. From time to time shalt thou drink. And this is symbolic of the defiled bread, the leaven of the Pharisees, because they get their doctrine from their father, the devil, as opposed to the bread of life, which is the word of God. Christ Jesus, who is that living water. For every positive, there's a negative, and Satan is that bitter water that brings about spiritual death rather than eternal life. And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes, and thou shalt bake it with dung that cometh out of man in their sight. Beelzebub being one of Satan's names, Lord of the dunghill is what that means. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread, their deception, that is to say, rather than the bread of life, rather than the truth of God's word, among the Gentiles, among the nations, whither I will drive them. And then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, my soul, notice he says soul here, so what are we really talking about? My soul hath not been polluted, for from my youth up even till now have I not eaten that which dieth of itself, or is torn in pieces, neither came their abominable flesh into my mouth. Again, he's speaking spiritually, talking about doctrine. Remember, Ezekiel was a priest, and he absorbed the word of God into his forehead and had nothing to do with false doctrine, the leaven of the Pharisees, the Kenites, that is to say, the deception of Satan that he brings about through his children, the Kenites. Then he said unto me, Lo, I have given thee cow's dung for man's dung, and thou shalt prepare thy bread therewith, this being symbolic and a sign to the house of Israel, all twelve tribes. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem, and they shall eat bread by weight and with care, and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment. And the famine of the end times is for what? Hearing the word of God. Rather than hearing the word of God, which is the bread of life, they hear the false doctrine that brings about the deception, ultimately, at the sixth trumpet that Christ has returned. But it's going to be Antichrist at the sixth trumpet, and they're going to die spiritually because of that famine, that famine of the end times, for hearing the truth of God's word. Verse 17, to complete the chapter, that they may want bread and water and be astonished one with another and consume away for their iniquity. And when you consume away, you die, spiritually speaking. That's what's going to happen to those that partake of the false doctrine now and especially during the sixth trumpet, whenever they are taken away by the flood of lies that issues out of Satan's mouth during that famine for hearing the truth of God's word, as you can read of in Amos chapter 8. So stay in the word, prayerfully study God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse prayerfully using your strong's concordance to understand to the best of your ability diligently hearkening unto the voice of the lord your god